Welcome to Simplex IT's second webinar on Office. This is Office 2013 Excel Pivot Tables by Michelle Bobola. Uh, apologize that we had a couple of glitches, so you'll see the narrative kind of jump a few times. Uh, not Michelle's fault. And here's Michelle. This session is going to move quickly. In order for me to get through the topics, I am going to have you hold your questions until the end of the session, and then I will um, go ahead and address them at the end of the session. So let's go ahead and begin. So pivot tables, what are pivot tables? Some of you may use, have used pivot tables in the past, and what they are is it's another way of looking at your information in Excel a different way. It allows you to manipulate the data in Excel without changing the um, existing worksheet. So I can take this worksheet, I can take the information that's in it, and I can move it around to look at it differently. A pivot table looks like a crosstab query, if you're familiar with anything in a database format. So basically what I have right now is I have a spreadsheet that has some labels at the top. So I have like the order date when the item was ordered, who sold it, what they sold, how many units did they sell, etc. So I'm going to be taking this information and creating a pivot table out of it. You will notice that it's helpful if your data has headings, because so you notice that I have labels, order date, sales rep, product, and those labels will be used to move around when you create the pivot table so that you know what fields you're moving around. So it does help to have labels. It also helps to keep your data together without having blank rows separating the data or blank columns. Um, so I'm in, gonna be inside of the data. Um, the other thing is if I do control A, control A will select the range first and it will highlight all the way from A1 to data, which is I have an H830. So it's going to highlight that. Though you don't have to highlight the data um, if before you create the pivot table as long as you're inside of the range um, when you do it. Um, also, if you work with name ranges, then that's something you can use also. So if you've named the range and you want to use that when you create the pivot table, you can do that. So to get started is you go inside your range and then you go to the insert ribbon above and on the far left hand side is a pivot table button. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to bring up the create pivot table window. So it's automatically selected my range for me. My name of my sheet tab is coffee tea data. It's selecting A1, which is cell A1, through H830. It has the dollar signs to lock those cells so that it always is going to refer to the data within this range. If for some reason that range changes and it becomes larger, you're going to have to update that, and I'll show you how to do that later. Second thing is it's going to put it to default it to a new worksheet. So I'm going to take this pivot table because it's very large and I'm going to put it on a new worksheet. Though so sometimes people will take smaller pivot tables and put them on the existing worksheet to the right of the data, which you can do also. And then later I'm going to do another one where I'll talk about this data model um, in a little bit. So for right now, it's selected my range. I'm going to put it on a new worksheet and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, what happens is when I do that is I end up with the um, ribbons up at the top where it says analyze and design and um, okay good it's out of the way analyze and design so those are the ribbons that come up with the pivot table and then on the right hand side I have the field list and this is where I go to set up my pivot table so those labels that I was talking about appear here so you can see them here and then down below are the boxes where you're going to put the labels that you want now you can actually change this arrangement around there's a little button over here on the right the tools button but when I click on the drop down arrow I can choose the second one where it puts the fields on the left and then the boxes on the right actually when I do the pivot table I actually use this setup because I can see more of my fields this way and then there are other settings in here that you can look at too but this is the one that I'm going to go with 
what fields I'm going to put where. But the nice thing about a pivot table is that you can change those fields around. If you put them in a box and you don't like where they are, then you can change that quickly. So I'm going to take order date. I'm going to put it in the row section. If you notice on the far left hand side, all of the dates are going to the left hand side. Now, one of the things to think about when you are putting your fields in the specific rows or columns box is that in Excel, you have, in 2013, you have over a million rows. So you have a lot of rows. So if you have a lot of data, then you're going to want to put it in the row box. If you put a field in the column box, then you have to make sure that you don't have any more than 16,000 um, 384, because uh, in Excel you have 16,384 columns, um, where you used to have 255 in 2003, you have a lot more, but if for some reason you would have um, more than 16,384 um, columns, then you would lose data. So if, say, you have um, a spreadsheet that has 17,000 items, you would need to put that in the row box, not in the column box. So now I'm going to take the sales rep. I'm going to move them into the column box. And then I'm going to take total dollars, and I'm going to move that into the value box. Now, any field that you put in the value box, it automatically is going to calculate that field. So if it's a number field, it's going to total it. Though, if I click on the drop-down arrow, so as I was saying, when you move a field into the value box, it automatically calculates that field. So if it's a number field, it's going to total it. Though if I click on the drop-down arrow and go to value field settings, then you can also change it to average if you want the average value or max or min or any other type of calculation that's in here. Later, I'm going to actually show you how you can take the same field and actually do a percentage if you want. So you could put the same field in twice, and one of them could be a total, and the other one could be an average or a percentage. So we'll look at that later. But in the meantime, we're going to go with the sum function, and that is the default. If you put a text field in the value box, it's going to count it. So whatever uh, field you put in the value box, it's always going to calculate that field depending on what type of field it is. So now that I have my field set up, I'm going to close my field list box. And I can do that by clicking on the X here, or I can go ahead and click on the field list box here. And then if I want to bring that back later to change things around, all I have to do is click on that field list button on the Analyze tab. And one of the things you're going to notice about the um, pivot table is that you're going to notice that it has row labels and column labels instead of it saying order date and sales rep. That's because, by default, it uses the compact design. I don't know why, but apparently that's the one they picked, and I don't like this one, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to go to the design ribbon. I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow where it says report layout. And I'm going to shoot, choose Show in Outline Form. Now, when I choose that layout, the labels appear. And then if I go to Tabular Form, it just puts the lines, shows you the grid lines, so it's easier to see and follow along um, in the worksheet. So it's just a personal preference whether you want the um, Outline Form or the Tabular Form. So I'm going to keep it set to the Tabular Form. I'm going to go back to the Analyze tab. Now you'll notice next to the fields, you'll notice that there's a drop-down arrow for filtering. So if I wanted to just look at certain individuals, I could uncheck the select box and then just check the ones that I want to And then I can just look at the people that I want to see. And then I can clear that filter by clicking the clear filter button. I can also go to label filters because it, and then I'm going to say begins with the letter G, click OK, and it's going to show me those employees or sales reps whose last name ends in G. I'm going to click on it and clear it again. With the order date, I'm going to click on the drop down arrow and go to date filters. So the nice thing, because it knows that the data in that 
in that column as dates, I could filter this. Now, this is 2012, but if this was 2014, I could say next week, this week, last week, yesterday. Um, but I could also say in this one, I'm going to say after 12, 1, 12. And I'm going to get everything after, well, I should have said 11.30, but that's okay. 12.2 to 12.30, and you can see that I just am looking at December's sales. And then I can also clear that. Then if you want to filter the information in the center, that would be considered the value filter because that is the, the number in the middle. So let's say I say greater than or equal to thousand and I hit OK. Now basically what it's doing is it's giving me the values that are greater than 6,000 for the grand total. So it's taking the whole day and then giving me the grand total. So that is the value filter. So you'll notice there's a little funnel here so I can tell which column or row I'm filtering by. So I click on it and I clear that out and then I'm back to all my data. So that's a nice feature that you have. Then the value that's in the center is the sum of total dollars, the field up here in the left-hand corner. That field is the one that is being calculated in the middle. Though I can change the name of this label, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Field Settings on the Analyze ribbon. You could also right-click and go to um, Value Field Settings also. And when you do that, you can then change the name of the custom name. So I'm going to call it Total Sales. You cannot use the same name as the source name. If you wanted to, call, if you wanted it to say Total Dollars, and you click Total Dollars, it would not let you do that. So you have to pick a different name. The custom name has to be different than the actual source name. And then click OK, and then it says Total Sales. The other thing that you notice is that it's not formatted and the numbers. Now, you don't want to highlight the numbers and format them like you normally would in Excel. The reason being is because you're working with a pivot table. If you change the pivot table around and then end up with numbers over here on the right, they would not be formatted because you would only be formatted formatting the certain cells. So what you really want to do is you want to format the field. To do that, you click on Total Sales because that is the numbers in the center. Go to Field Settings. In the bottom right left-hand corner, you'll see a button that says Number Format. You click on it. Then you choose the format that you want. I'm going to pick the currency format, which is puts the dollar sign up against the number. Some people like the accounting format that puts the dollar sign to the far left of the cell. I'm going to take out the decimals, make sure that there's a dollar sign, click OK, click OK. So now those numbers in the center are formatted. And then if I move the pivot table around, the numbers over here would end up being formatted also. So you want to make sure that you format the field. Another thing that you can do in a pivot table and because this is a date, you can group the date together. So I'm going to go ahead and select the order date field. And on the Analyze ribbon, there's a Group Selection button. I'm going to click on that. And basically, it says it's starting. It's smart enough to know that my it starts from January 1st to, to December 31st. Though, if your fiscal year started in July and ended in June, you could change that. So then it would know that June, July, August was the first quarter, or July, August, September was the first quarter, and not January, February, March. But I'm going to leave this as is. I'm going to select months and hit OK, and watch what happens. It groups everything down into a month um, Instead of it broken down by individual day, it just grouped it down to months. I can even take that a step further and click on Group Selection, choose Quarters also, hit OK, and now I have it broken down by quarters. You will notice that the quarter field is not subtotaling because it's not an existing field in my worksheet, but I can also fix that by selecting the quarter field going into Field Settings, 
choose notice that it says none for subtotals, but if I choose custom sum and hit OK, then all of a sudden I have subtotals for the quarter um, field. And I can do that with any field I want. I can turn off the subtotals or turn them on. Now, the other thing you probably have noticed is when I um, put my mouse on top of the quarter one sum, I get this little black arrow. When I clicked on it, it highlighted all of the quarterly sum subtotal lines. If you wanted to, you could always right click and then shade those if you wanted to, print it, make it look the way you wanted it to look. The other thing, this is called the Enable Selection feature. When I put it above order date and I click on order date, notice how it just highlights the months. Or if I click above sales rep, or if I click above Davis. Now, if I click here where it says quarter one sum, the Enable Selection is under Select. So if I choose values, it only selects the values in the list. If I choose Select Labels, it only selects those labels, and if I choose labels and values, that's the one that it does. So if I do this, and then I say select values, it highlights all of the, the months except for the subtotals. So it allows you to select certain parts of your pivot table. Now, for some reason, if it's not working, I'm going to go to select and hit enable selection, because that actually turns it off. So if you notice now, when I put my mouse, it's not turning into a black arrow. So for some reason, if it's not working, you need to go to Select, and you need to hit Enable Selection again. As soon as you turn that on, then you can go and you can select different parts of your pivot table. So it lets you see those things a little bit more uh, clearly. Now, the other thing that you may notice, too, is that there are some cells that are empty because they don't have any data in them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to where it says on the Analyze ribbon in the far left-hand side, it says Options. I'm going to click on that, and that brings up the Pivot Table Option window. I can give the Pivot Table a name if I want. I can call it Coffee, Tea, Pivot, because you might be doing more pivots in your workbook. I can also down here, you can merge and center your labels if you wanted to. But one of the things it says for empty cells show, I'm going to type a zero. I'm going to hit OK. And now, wherever there was an empty cell, it's going to show zero dollars. Now, as I mentioned before, some people like the accounting format. So I'm going to go to total cells. Remember, I'm formatting the field. I'm going to go to field settings. I'm going to go to number format, change it to accounting. OK. Now what happens is it changes it to the accounting format where the dollar sign is to the far left, but also the zeros show up as a dash because you're using the accounting format. Now I'm looking at this number here under Davis for the month of August. And I see that you know he has sales of 16,540 for the month. And I want to know, OK, how did he get that number? Well, I'm going to put my mouse on top of the number. I'm going to double click. And what happens is it's going to throw that data on a new sheet. It's called the drill down method. And I can, if I want, I can sort this from oldest to newest. So it's from August 3rd to the end of the month. And then it automatically brings up the little drop down auto filter buttons so you can filter the data. So if you just want to see his coffee sales, you can do that. And then you can, you know, clear it if you need to. But you can see that now you have the breakdown of his cells for that month. Even though it shows the whole month number here, you're actually seeing the breakdown over here. Now, uh, down here, I'm going to call this, I'm going to name this sheet tab. I'm going to call it Coffee Tea Pivot because I want to make sure that I don't accidentally delete this later on. So that's one of the things that you can do with um, the numbers in the center. Now, the other thing is if for some reason your data should change, then there's a button here that says change data source. So if you actually went back to the data sheet and you added more data, then in the pivot table, just go here, go to change data source, 
and then change the date. So now if you had data down to say row 1000, you just type 1000 in here, hit OK, and then your pivot table will update all the new information that has been added. Um, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the insert. I'm actually going to hit my save button because I don't want to lose anything. I'm going to go to the insert ribbon and I'm going to go to the coffee tea data uh, pivot table again. And I'm going to do pivot table, but this time I'm going to check this, add this data to the data model. I just want to show you what this does. What this is going to do is it allows you to use fields from multiple sheets in a pivot table. So I'm going to hit OK, and then it's going to create a new pivot table. And all I'm going to do is just drag a few fields um, maybe we'll drag sales row up here, maybe product here, and maybe unit, unit. well, I'll take quantity and just put it there. Just something simple. I just threw that together. Now I'm going to go to the Coke Pepsi um, data sheet tab, and then I'm going to go to the insert, and I'm going to click on the recommended pivot table button. And what this one does is it gives you some recommended pivot tables that you can choose from. So you might say, oh, okay, I want, that looks good. You look through here, you go, oh, okay, that looks good, that looks good. So you decide what you want. So you can just pick whatever you want. And then let's just say we do the first one. We hit okay. So I have this pivot table that I just created through the recommended pivot table feature. And then there's a button over here on the left here on the right hand side that says more tables so if I click on that and it says you what you need to create another pivot table in order to be able to use tables from multiple um, sheets I'll just hit yes and now what you'll be able to see is that I can automatically choose fields from the coffee tea worksheet and the coke pepsi worksheet so if I wanted to I could take the sales reps from coke pepsi um, and put them in here. Um, I think I already have that. So I need the coffee tea. And then I could take the product from the coffee tea and the product from the Coke Pepsi. So you can actually now, when you add them to the data model, you can actually add fields from other pivots, I mean, other worksheets and other pivot tables to merge them into another pivot table. So it just gives you that option of doing that. So I just wanted to show that real quick. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do those extra sheets that I just created. And remember, when you delete sheets, you can't undo. So I'm just going to go back to the coffee tea pivot. And now what I'm going to talk about is the um, how to move your fields around. So now that I have this pivot table set up, I may want to change it. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the quarters um, field. I'm going to take out the sales rep field. I'm going to move the order date into the column box and it's still going to be group by month. I'm going to take the uh, coffee tea category in the row and put product underneath that so that I can put more than one field in there and then I'm going to close my field list box on the right. Now you'll notice to the left of coffee there's a little minus so that I can collapse and expand the fields and then Let's say I have the product. Watch what happens when I double click on Costa Rica. It's automatically going to bring up another a detail box and ask me, is there another field that I want to see? You can actually do different levels in your pivot table. So I may say, yeah, when I when I click on a product, I want to see who sold that product. So I'm going to go ahead and click on sales rep and click OK. Then when I click on the drop down arrow to the left of the product, I'm going to get the sales rep breakdown and who sold what for that product. And you can even do it again. You can double click on the sales rep. So if I expand this, double click on a sales rep, and then I can choose unit. Let's do quantity and hit OK. And then I want to know how much they sold. I can click on that. So I could keep going depending on what you want to do. 
So I'm going to go back to the field list. And then you can see I have four different fields in the row box. I'm going to take quantity out of there. And then I'm going to take the sales rep and I'm going to move that to the filter box. Now, when you put a field in the filter box, that takes that field and puts it in the upper left-hand corner of the pivot table. What you're going to notice is there's a drop-down arrow. So right now, I'm looking at all of the data, but if I click on the drop-down arrow, I can then just pick a certain um, employee, click OK. Now I'm just looking at his sales. You could even take another field, like the category field, and move it up there too. Then I can say, okay, I want to see this employee for coffee or this employee for tea. Filtering your pivot table um, down to what you want to see. Now, when I click on that and choose all, and click on this and choose all, the other thing you'll notice is that it says select multiple items. So I can check that box and then I can uncheck all and just pick a few employees. But it doesn't tell you who the employees are in that box. It just says multiple items. I'm just going to uncheck that, check all, and hit OK. I'm going to take coffee, tea, put it back here, row section. I'm going to get rid of this empty row at the top. Now, this next feature that I'm going to show you, when before you do this, um, you, miss, can, you need to make sure that it's set to all when you do this next step. And I'll explain why in a minute. So now I have it set to all. I'm seeing all of the sales rep sales data. In the, on the Analyze ribbon where the Option button is, I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow, and it says Show Report Filter Pages. So any field that you put in the filter box, then this will bring up that field when you click on this button. So I click on it. It says Sales Rep. I hit OK. Watch what it did. It created a sheet for each sales rep. So whatever field was in that box, when you click on it, it will bring up a page. So if I had product in that box and I chose product, each of these would be a product or each of these would be the month. Like you could put order date in here and then you could have January, February, March, April, May. So it created a sheet or a worksheet for every single employee. And the reason that you had to have it set to all was if you had an employee name in here before you ran that, it would actually skip Hankins because it already was filtered for Hankins. So you need to make sure that it was set to all before you actually ran that feature. Now, I'm going to go back to my coffee tea data sheet, and I'm going to uh, Hankins with Smith and hit replace all. And it told me it made 128 replacements. So I'm going to close this and go back to my pivot table. Now, when I click on the drop down arrow, you'll see that Hankins is still there. So, what you need to do is on the analyze ribbon, you need to refresh your pivot tables. Your pivot tables are not like charts. They will not automatically update when you change the data on the worksheet. You have to refresh. Because I have more than one pivot table um, on my, in my workbook, I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh all. Now, when I do refresh all, notice now that Hankins is gone and Smith is there. But because I've already run my pages, it's still going to have a sheet tab for Hankins click on it, notice that it says cats. And that's because Hankins is gone. It went to the next name in the list. So I can just change it to Smith, and then I can just rename the sheet tab to Smith. 
it's okay to do that if you only have one change to make. If it's a number value that you change, then you wouldn't have to worry about that. But when you're changing actual text data, you, you would have to make those changes. So if you had a lot of sheets to change, it wouldn't make sense to do that. So what I would recommend you do is to delete all the old sheets from the workbook and then just go back and rerun the filter just to recreate the new pages after you refresh the pivot table. That way your all your pages you'll know are updated and you don't have to worry about it. So if I go back to field list and I take the sales rep out of there, then notice when I click on the drop down arrow that that filter page is grayed out. It's because there's nothing in the filter box. So this only works for whatever fields are in the filter box. All right, now what I wanted to talk about was I wanted to talk about um, formulas. And I had mentioned earlier that, you know, you could take the same field, put it in here, and then you can do the same field again and make it a different formula. So I'm going to take total dollars and I'm going to put it underneath total sales. And when I do that, it's I'm going to click on the little drop down arrow and go to value field settings again and I'm going to call this percentage. And then I'm going to click on the show value as tab and where it says no calculation I'm going to click on the drop down arrow and you can see I have a bunch of choices in here to choose from. I'm going to choose percent of grand total. So what I want to know is, you know, what the total sales were for that month and then what was the total, what was the percentage for that month. So I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see that I have for January total sales. Remember, I have that enable selection button. So I got the total sales for the month of January and February and March. And then for that month, I have the total percentage of sales for that month. So if it was 950, that was 15% of sales. 2800, it was 44% of sales for March. And remember that enable selection, you could just select all the percentages and format them differently, or you could select all the total sales and format them differently if you wanted to. So you have that option. And I took the same field, total dollars. And so we were showing you, I was showing you how to go ahead and set up the um, same field and calculate it differently. But if I take the percentage field and move it out of notice it disappears. It doesn't stay here. So now I, I'd have to take total dollars, drag it back to values, and then go ahead and recalculate it again. But what I do is I can also create a calculated field. And on the Analyze ribbon under Field Items and Sets, there's a button that says Calculated Field. I'm actually going to create a, a, a field called Bonus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create what's called an if statement. So I'm going to do equals if parentheses. Then I'm going to do total dollars. If total dollar sales is greater than or equal to 5,000, comma, and so if that statement is true, then this that I wanted to do this next thing, which I wanted to take 10% times, that's not a percent sign, times total dollars. So they're going to get a 10% bonus. Or if that's not true, they'll get 5% times total dollars. Close parenthesis. Then I'm going to hit add. I'm going to hit OK, and there is that field now. So if they were under 5,000, they got a 5% bonus, and if they were over 5,000, they got a 10% bonus. If I want to rename this field, I can click on Sum of Bonus and go to Field Settings. Remember, I cannot use the same as the source name, so I could just call it um, Total Bonus. If I want to edit the calculation, go back to Calculated Field, and you'll notice there's a little drop-down arrow here. Now, it, it defaults back to a new field because it thinks you're going to create a new calculation. But if you want to edit the existing calculation, click on the drop-down arrow, select Bonus, 
then make your change. So if I want to say now they get 20% um, over 5,000 and they get 10%, make sure you hit the Modify button and click OK. So now it's 10% under 5,000, 20% over 5,000. So now that calculated field is there. Then if I take it out of the value box, it'll still be there for me to use later. So you can actually create your own calculated fields if you want. The other thing is you can go to the design ribbon. You can pick different designs for your pivot tables if you want. Um, and then you can do like banded rows. Every other row is shaded. Banded columns. Every other column is uh, If you want to go back to normal, the very top one is, says clear, none. You can choose that one. Though it does tend to keep some lines in there if you do that. But that's how you would format it if you want. Now, two things in, I'm going to hide my field list, two things that are on the Analyze ribbon that are strictly for pivot tables is one of them is called slicers. You see it says insert slicer. And the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is if you click outside of the pivot table, your pivot table toolbars will disappear. But if you click inside, it will um, come back. And I noticed the time is getting, it's 10 minutes till. We may end up going over because of the interruptions that we had. So if you want to stay on a little bit longer, go ahead um, so that uh, I can, I'm going to continue until I get through the topics that I wanted to cover today. So I'm going to hit the Insert Slicer button. I'm going to choose Cells Rep. Even though Cells Rep isn't in the pivot table right now, I'm going to check Cells Rep, hit OK. And what a slicer is, it's a filter box. So I'm going to take that filter box and move it over here. And of course, when it's selected, there's a there's actually a ribbon for the slicer where you can change the colors and things like that. But I'm going to pick an, uh, an employee and notice that I'm just looking at his sales. If I hold my control key down, I can select more than one employee. And then I can just look at their information. So it's a quick way of filtering the data without having to put it in the upper left-hand corner of your pivot table. There's a little button in the upper right-hand corner where you can click on the X and clear that out. Now, you can bring up another slicer. I'm going to click inside the pivot table, bring back the Analyze ribbon. I'm going to hit Insert Slicer again, bring up Order Date, even though Order Date's in the pivot table. And I'm going to put that slicer over here. Then I'm going to click on an employee and click on a month. So, or I can click on two months. So what you can do now is you can select an, an employee and a, and a couple months or whatever you want and filter the data. And if you sent this to the printer, it actually would print this information that's on your screen right now. The only problem with the slicers is that they, they're they very big and there's really nowhere to, to move them other than over here. You can't put them up here. You can size them if you want, but they do tend to get in the way. But they are a quick way of filtering data if you need to. To delete the slicer, you just, you should clear out the information first. So you should make sure that you clear out the filters before you delete the slicers. So I'm just going to hit E, and then that will automatically get rid of the slicers. Now, one of the things in 2013, this is, un this is new to 2013 version, is the timeline. Since I have an order date in here, I'm going to hit timeline and click on check order date and hit OK. And then you're going to notice that I have this little timeline over here on the right, which you know, of course you can change colors and stuff. But basically what I can do with the timeline, just make sure that you're in the right year and you're not in 2014. If the information is for the year 2012, just make sure there's a little arrow here that can take you there. And then you can just select the months that you want or click and drag over more than one month. So you have this little timeline that you can choose. Now, even though I'm grouping the data by month, if I click here where it says months and choose days, now what it's doing is giving me the individual days 
So I can just highlight over a couple of days if I want to see sales for the first through the fifth. Even though it's grouped, still grouped by month, I can break this timeline up into days and you can actually click on the days that you want. So this is a nice new little feature in 2013. If I click on the timeline and delete it, then I go, oops, I forgot to unfilter it. Well, that's why you see the little funnel in the corner and you can just hit clear and bring everything back. Two more things I want to talk about. One of them is the conditional formatting feature. If you're familiar with conditional formatting, what it is is you're going to set a condition and then if the values in the cell meet that condition, then you want it to format the cells a certain way. Now, before I do this, I need to make sure that I'm in the center of my pivot table because this is the value that I'm actually wanting to um, create, the, the condition. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow. I'm going to go to Manage Rules. Now, I know it says Show Formatting Rules for this pivot table, but I'm actually going to change that to say this worksheet because if I move the pivot table around, I also wanted to format any cells over here. So I wanted to format the entire worksheet, not just this pivot table. If it's this pivot table, you, then you're not changing it, that's fine. But if you're using this pivot table and you're gonna be moving the fields around, make sure it says this worksheet. I'm gonna hit new rule. I'm gonna choose all cells showing total cells. That's the, the value in the middle. If I choose the third one, it will, it will format for the way the product and the order date fields only. If I change it to sales and order date, then it wouldn't format the cells correctly. So I'm just gonna do the middle one. But if you do the bottom one, and then it doesn't include the grand totals either. I'm gonna choose format only cells that contain, and I'm just gonna say is greater than 6,000. No, you know what, I'll say 5,000. So I pick the condition, then I'm going to hit the format button, and I'm going to have it format those cells that meet that condition. I'm going to change the font color, and then I'm going to hit the fill, if I want to pick a fill color in there, and hit OK. So now I've set the condition, and if it meets that condition, I want it to format those cells this way. I'll hit OK. okay. And as you can see, it automatically is formatting the cells that are over 5,000. Now, if I want to change my pivot table, I can do that. So if I decide that I want to take out the order date, did I want to put the sales reps in here, or I want to move the order date up here and take this out and put order date in here. See, anywhere where it's over 5,000, it's automatically going to format the cells. If you want to change that, then you go back to Home Ribbon conditional formatting, manage rules, click on the rule and hit edit rule. And then I may change this to say, okay, I want it to say 10,000 now. And I hit okay, okay, and then anything over 10,000 is highlighted. If you want to clear out the rules altogether, go to conditional formatting. If we go to conditional formatting and we go to man clear rules from entire sheet, it'll take out the the conditional formatting for you. All right, the other thing that I wanted to show you, one last thing, was I'm going to go into the pivot table on the Analyze ribbon, is that you can also do what's called a pivot chart. So if I click on the pivot chart button, I can create a chart, but the only problem is it puts the chart on top of the pivot table, which then you have to move it, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create a quick pivot chart by being inside the pivot table. Hit your F11 key and it will automatically create a pivot chart. Well, it's supposed to. There we go. And the, what a pivot chart is, is it's where you can actually um, change the information while you talk about it. So like for order date, I can say, okay, just show me January and March sales for these particular people. So you could throw this up on the board and then you could just talk about this and you can change the data as you want. The other thing you could do is you can go to bring up on the analyze ribbon, you could go to field list 
And you can actually change this around. So you could take like cells rep and put it over there. And then you could put coffee tea here, um, maybe put product there, whatever you want to do and change up the pivot table. So you can pick an employee up here in the corner and you can say for all the dates, whatever it is that you want to do. So you can actually change up the chart while you're talking about it. When you do that, be aware that charts are linked to the pivot table. So if you change the chart information, it is affecting the pivot table. If you go in here and you change the pivot table, it affects the chart. So basically, you have some people will have a, you know, like a first quarter sales pivot, first quarter sales chart, second quarter sales pivot, second quarter sales chart. So that way they can work with the two different charts. So you can have multiple charts and multiple pivot tables in your workbook. So, so those are the, some of the things that you can do with your pivot tables. Um, I hope that this was um, interesting. I hope that you can see that what the, the nice thing about a pivot table is you can make all these changes to the pivot table and it is not affecting the data. The data is the same as it was when we first started and the pivot table, you can do whatever you want. So there's no reason for you to be afraid of the, of the um, function, be able to go in and manipulate, manip manipulate your data as much as you want and go crazy with it and, and do whatever you want with it. So um, I want to thank you for participating in today's um, webcast. I hope you found these tips useful and will be able to create and work with these pivot tables more effectively. Sorry for the interruption today. We just had some glitches, but if there's any questions that you have regarding what was covered, you can send them along. If not, the next session is going to be on February 13th, Outlook as your friend, as Bob said. So I want to thank you again for participating in today's session. Cool. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, yeah, this is Coppage again. First of all, I want to apologize uh, very much for the couple of glitches we had. Uh, we set up uh, kind of the workstation at the last second for actually doing the presentation. So that's absolutely on us, not on, certainly not on Michelle. Um, as uh, I indicated earlier, I'm just switching over here for a quick second. Uh, what we've got upcoming, we have our monthly luncheon hour. We do this every month uh, at uh, uh, on the third Wednesday of the month. Actually, it's next Wednesday. Uh, it's a free lunch. Our topic's going to be IT trends for 2014. Uh, those of you who know me, you know I am an opinionated person. So, And that will actually also be broadcast on, on uh, link. So if you're bored and want to hear about that uh, or you want a free lunch, join us. Uh, the next office webinar, as Michelle was saying, Outlook is your friend. Uh, just really, how do you do some things, you know, signatures, uh, auto replies out of office, all of those kind of things that we, we know Outlook can do, but we don't necessarily know how to do that. Uh, then we're going to have uh, our next lunch in our in February is going to be files in the cloud, what can go wrong. We know all about the Dropboxes, the Sky Drives, the uh, iClouds, all that good fun stuff. How secure are they? How well do they work? What are the differences from, uh, you know, from using it really from a professional and business standpoint? And uh, then, you know, we'll still be doing webinars and lunch hours in March, but uh, in April, April 8th, uh, we were going to have, uh, actually, it's pretty cool. Haven't finalized the details yet, so I'm not quite ready to, to let everybody know, uh, but we're going to have a, a fun event on uh, that evening. Um, that's going to be open to the public and uh, is not going to be terribly, well, it'll be kind of nerdish, not geekish, I guess, whatever. Uh, for any of this stuff, just uh, email events at simplex-it.com. Uh, I would also point out that this, uh, this uh, video will be up on YouTube uh, probably by mid next week. Uh, if you've registered, you'll get an email from us uh, pointing you to it. Uh, if not, send an email to this uh, address 
and we'll make sure you get a notification on that. And also, uh, if you'd like to go further with this, if you'd like us to actually sit down and, uh, and, and for Michelle to uh, come on site or do remote and some training specifically, uh, we absolutely would love to do that too. Uh, hopefully, as you see, Simplex IT, we're pretty much dedicated to uh, sharing knowledge and uh, helping people get better use out of your computer, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so let us know. So events at simplex-it.com. And I uh, don't see any questions in any of the chats. So uh, thank you very much. Hope you have uh, a warmer day. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.